Hey guys, so today I'm going to do another fun makeup look. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just going with the flow and we'll see what I come up with. First of all, I want to say sorry for my hair. It's just one of those days where my hair looks like a complete mess and even the bun I tried to throw it up in is just completely falling out. So, sorry about that. I think it's because I need to get my roots redone. Because when I have like this much rootage, my hair just looks like it's really dirty and oily, even though it's not. It's actually super clean. That's why it's falling out of the bun. But yeah, I need to get my hair retouched. So please ignore that and let's just jump into the video. Alright, first of all, I'm just going to go in with my primer. I'm just applying this all over. My skin has been kind of funny lately. Like my forehead has been quite dry. I feel like my skin up here is kind of aging faster and it's lost a lot of its moisture. So I have to be extra careful to put a little bit more moisturizing products on my forehead. But then like my cheeks and my chin and my nose, they're all still super oily and I still get a lot of acne down there. So my skin's in that really funny stage right now. <laughs> After that, I'm going to go in with some foundation. And I want to mix these two together just because neither of them is the right color for me right now. This one's too pale and this one is slightly too dark. And this one's more of a matte foundation. This one is more of a glowy, radiant foundation. So I'm going to mix these two together. And I'm going to mix it on top of this Mary Kay palette. I have a bunch of these palettes because I used to be a Mary Kay representative and yeah I just never really fully got into it so I have like a bunch of stuff that is left over so I'm going to take one of the clean palettes and I'm going to mix my foundation on top of this palette just so I can get an even coverage and consistency of both of them Alright, so that's what it looks like when it's, it's mixed together, and I'm just going to take a little bit on my BH Cosmetics 117 brush, which is like an angled flat top, so I'm just going to be applying this all over, and hopefully this will match me pretty well. My arms are pretty dark, but my face and my chest and my neck are pretty light because I do cover them up a lot more than my arms. So my arms are still quite dark, but the rest of me is not really. So we'll see if I can match pretty well. I think I'm going to have to blend down my neck a little bit, but that's okay. I like to really buff around the sides of my nose, just to make sure that it really blends into my nose. I like to go kind of light on my nose area. I don't like to apply too much coverage on my nose just because I do feel like if I apply too much in that area it does just cake up and separate and look really patchy. So I go really lightly over the area of my nose and then I just make sure to buff it in on the sides just to really get the full maximum coverage that I can get on the sides of my nose without putting too much product on there. Hopefully mixing these two palettes together, I can come up with a really pretty look. I was actually not feeling inspired at all, and I went out and I asked my husband, what should I do today, and he said a peacock look. So I'm going to do green and purples, quickly going to conceal just underneath my eyes, and then I'm going to pop some down the bridge of my nose, a little bit in between my eyebrows, and just a dot on the center of my chin and above my lip. I'm just going to pat this on. And I always like to blend out on my nose with my finger as well. Just like I said earlier, just to make sure that my nose doesn't get patchy or anything. I like to be very careful around my nose area just because I do feel like that's where my foundation will always break up. So I like to Pay extra attention to my nose area. And I have my concealer on. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to powder using my Rimmel Stay Matte. This is the powder that I've been really, really loving. When I first started using it, I wasn't 
completely sure about it just because I had heard so much hype and I was like eh it's good but it's not like amazing but then I started using other powders again and I was like oh actually I quite like this so I like that it's really inexpensive and that it works really well and before I move on to the eyes I just want to add a little bit of blush just because I want to add some color back into my complexion I'm going to take dandelion which is a very very neutral blush so I can really go crazy with the eye makeup if I want to and then add more blush later or just leave it how it is if I feel like I have enough blush. I'm going to take this e.l.f. eyeshadow primer and I'm just going to apply this on my eyes. I think while I'm thinking about it, I'm also going to pop down a base on top of this eyeshadow primer just so I can have a lot of pigmentation to my eyeshadows. So I'm going to look at my little cup in a second and see what I want to put down just to make sure that the colors of these eyeshadows are really vibrant. I kind of feel with the Stila palettes that some of the eyeshadows don't come off as pigmented as you would like. Yeah, I'm going to pop this down. I might go all the way to the inner corner of my eye. Blend out that white base using my BH122 brush. And I'm just going to blend that in just so the colors go down on it really smooth and there's no chunky bits in my eyeshadow. Something really funny is one of my friends in high school used to hate the word chunky. Like she used to get the shivers whenever people would say it. So I don't say it very often, but whenever I do, I kind of get a laugh just thinking about it. It's kind of a gross word, isn't it? Chunky. <laughs> One thing I've noticed about these palettes is that they don't really have a nice transition shade for my crease. So I think I'm going to go in with my bronzer by Milani. This one is a baked bronzer in the shade Glow. I think I'm going to apply this in my crease just because I really do want to make sure that this look goes smooth. I'm going to be applying this in my crease right above where I applied the NYX eyeshadow pencil in Milk. So I'm just going to blend this on back and forth. And this is really nice too because it has a lot of warmth to the bronzer. And a lot of the eyeshadows in those two palettes are really cool toned. And sometimes I feel like cool toned eyeshadows don't look the best on me just because I have warm undertones to my skin. So this will make sure that it's not so harsh of a look and really pairs well with the rest of my makeup. First one, the Stila in the Moment palette. And I'm going to go in with the shade Impulse, which is like a lilac lavender. I'm just going to take that color and I'm going to use my Real Techniques Base Eyeshadow Brush. And I'm just going to pop that shade down. After that, I'm going to go in with this next shade, which is called Glance. Now, this is one of the shades that I was talking about that doesn't appear as pigmented as you would expect when you look at the pan. I'm going to take the same brush and I'm just going to pop this down right next to where we put Impulse. So, as you can see, it's definitely not as pigmented as you would expect, so you can definitely build up the shade if you want to. I feel like the matte eyeshadows in the Stila palettes, they're good, however, they're kind of chalky and they're kind of hard to blend out, so you have to be very, very careful with them. I think Stila does like the best shimmery eyeshadows, like all of their shimmery eyeshadows are so buttery and smooth and they just blend out really easily, but their matte shades are a little bit harder to work with. I feel like the Lorac palettes do a lot better with the matte shades, but that is okay. We can work with these eyeshadows for sure. The next shade that I'm going to take is from the Stila in the Moment palette, and I'm going to take this color called Sage, and this is one of their shimmery ones, so I'm going to pop this on, and I'm just going to, again, just pop it right next to 
where I put that last purple shade called Glance. So I'm just going to pop that down, kind of blend it on top of it a little bit. And I'm leaving a little bit of room at the end because I'm going to apply a darker green at the very outer corner of my eye. See, like, the shimmery eyeshadows are just so much more pigmented and easier to put on than the matte shades. Dark forest green shade called Juniper. This is, again, a matte shade. So I'm going to place this down in the outer corner of my eye, right next to where I placed Sage. And then I will blend it out after I pack on that shade. It's getting kind of messy in the outer corners, but don't worry, I will wipe that away and fix that later. I kind of wish I had applied tape or something to the outer corners just to make sure that it didn't get too messy, but oh well. I wish I had shadow shields actually, that would be really awesome, but I've never gotten any before. First of all, I'm going to take the BH118 brush and I'm just going to slightly blend this out a little bit and then I'm going to go in with the Real Techniques blender eyeshadow brush afterwards just to blend it out a little bit more but I want to make sure to go in with a thin blending brush first of all just because I want to make sure that I don't smear around the colors too much and you know just make them muddled together so I'm going to be very very careful about blending them I'm just going to take that Real Techniques brush very very gently blend out the outer corner and then start to blend that dark juniper shade into where I applied that glow bronzer and I did lose some of the pigmentation but again I'll just go back on top and reapply it a little bit Once more, I'm going to go into that darkest outer corner shade, first of all, called Juniper. Just pack that down in the outer corner, just to really make it pigmented. And then I'm just going to start blending a little bit more. pop down, build up the pigmentation, kind of blend it into the juniper shade a little bit more. I'm just placing a little bit of it on that outer corner just to blend the two colors together. And once more just into that glam shade, again just so I can really pack up the pigmentation and also kind of mix it together a little bit with that shade, 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 with that say shade a little bit more and that impulse shade in the front corner a little bit more. I'm going to go back into that impulse shade, which was that like pinky lavender shade, and I'm going to apply this on my finger, and I'm just going to very gently build up the pigmentation. Just a little bit more, just because I feel like you really do need to build up the pigmentation of these shades. I'm going to take Instinct and I'm going to place this in the very inner corner of my eye. Oh, this one is so pigmented and pretty. And I'm just going to make sure to blend it back a little bit. I want to blend it out a little bit because I don't want it to look so harsh in my very inner corner. And just blend it out very gently. Yeah, I like it. It's very pretty. And I think what I'm going to do for the lower lash line is do half dark green and then the purple in the inner corner of my eye.
I don't have a green liner at the moment, but I do have a teal. This one is Teal Tees Cream Eyeliner by e.l.f. And then I do have a dark purple, which is another e.l.f. cream eyeliner. And the color is Punk Purple. So I'm going to take these two eyeliners. Of course, I'm going to focus the purple in the inner corner and then the blue shade in the outer corner. Hopefully these eyeliners haven't dried out completely because I haven't used them in a while. So we'll see if they apply nicely or not. I'm just going to take that purple shade and I'm going to start drying this on. It's applying pretty nicely. Ugh. I feel like it's not really showing up though. Alright, I changed my mind what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the green well, the teal shade on the purple area of my eye and the purple eyeliner on the green area of my eye. Uh, the teal shade seems a little bit drier, so hopefully it will go on as smooth as the purple shade. I'm going to see if this works a little bit better. Take the blue. I'm just putting the tiniest bit around the inner corner of my eye and then I might put some in my waterline. I'm going to be I'm putting the purple on the outer corner. And I feel like I really have to build up the pigmentation with the dark purple. Like it's not true to color at all. It comes off really sheer and then you have to really build up the pigmentation. I think that's why I like haven't used it in forever. I remember now that I used to hate it and now I remember why because it's just not pigmented. I was going to do a wing but I don't feel like doing a wing with this dark purple shade just because I feel like since it is kind of smudgy and not really pigmented, it could just make a total mess. I'm going to just create a wing with the Black L'Oreal eyeshadow eyeliner. <laughs> Just gonna fill that in with the black eyeliner all throughout it. going to take that black gel eyeliner and I'm just going to put this in my lower waterline just to tie the look together and meet it up where the blue is. Kind of just blend that together in the center. Alright and now it is finally time for mascara so I'm going to apply this to my top and my l bottom lashes. I have, I don't think I've ever done lower lashes before. So let's see if I can do this. Alright, being 100% honest here, I'm not even really sure how to put on lower lashes. Alright, so I got both sets of lashes on and feel pretty confident about them. They're probably not perfect, but for my first time, I feel pretty good about it. So I'm going to take my Milani Bake Bronzer that I used in my eyes and the same powder brush that I used earlier, and I'm just going to swirl this on my face. I'm going to try and do the rest of my makeup pretty quickly because obviously I feel like I've been doing this video forever. <laughs> I probably have, but that's okay because at least I had fun and I probably, it probably doesn't look professional, 
I feel pretty confident about it and I just feel happy that I tried something new and different and creative and I had a lot of fun and it turned out a lot better than I ever expected so I am happy about it and it's that I tried to do it that's what counts so if you ever feel like experimenting with your makeup totally do it because this was so much fun and I love how it turned out so far let's just contour my cheeks a little bit just to make sure that the makeup is balanced out. I don't want to make my eyes too heavy and then the rest of my makeup not look balanced at all. So just a little bit of contouring. Nothing too dramatic. Eyebrows. I'm going to put my Maybelline Brow Drama in them. My eyebrows are a mess as well. I need to get them groomed or you know groom on myself but they're a little messy, but they'll do for now. Alright, so all I need to do is apply a lip color, and I think nude would look really nice with this, but I'm going to go for something a little bit different. I'm going to go with this apricot shade from All May, which is just like a light, corally orange shade. I thought really glossy lips would look super pretty with this look. finished makeup look. We finally reached the end of the road with this makeup look and I really like how it looks. It feels a little bit weird to have bottom lashes on honestly just because I'm not used to them and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure it's a good one and I love you all and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!